This is Jeff Johnson. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at Washington University in the Division of Foot and Ankle Surgery. Susan McKinnon in the Division of Plastic Surgery at the same university. And I'm excited to work with Jeff today to do this simple uh, Morton's neuroma release. This is a female patient, 77 years of age, who's had about a five-year history of pain in the left foot third web space with signs and symptoms consistent with a Morton's interdigital neuroma. She has failed non-operative management with foot orthotics and change in footwear and has had a single steroid injection into that web space which provided her with some significant pain relief for a temporary period of time. A fan, but refused to be offended. Right. Uh, so, again. so I like I like just bend the toes down. Now you can see the med heads. Right there. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty easy. So I got Are I got five. Yeah. Got four, so we're gonna put a dot on three. Where's and then or, or, or oh. and then there's another one there, somewhere about in there. Yeah. And then I try to feel the shaft. If you feel really hard, you feel really hard, you can feel the shaft oh, yeah. right there. Yeah, the groove in between the shaft. Well, and I'm I'm trying to go there's the groove, so I'm feeling yeah. shaft here. I'm gonna, shaft is here. Uh okay, so I'm thinking the top of the shaft is right there. Yeah. And then the top of the shaft of where's three? Top of shaft of three is about right there. So then I say, okay. I want to be right in between here, so I kind of go into the middle of the web space. So that incision was actually quite good, um, but, quite, quite but, but but quite Improved good. Better. But uh, but I, I kind of go into the web space, yes. and I, so this yes. is where I would want to go. Something Much just better. like this, because yeah, I want to be. I don't. It's very easy to get this 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 incision oriented one way or the other relative to the metatarsals. Because if you want to extend this up, you got to go between the metatarsals. So there's no yeah. sense in being oblique to them. One thing that Jeff has emphasized is just making the incision. And in all the videos that Andrew and I have produced, that's something that is really key to a good result. Perineal nerve release at the knee, if the incision is proximal, you're not going to find the perineal nerve. So I really like Jeff's clarity of how to make that incision. Now we're using these little skin hooks and Fisher Tenotomy scissors. Those scissors are super for manipulating nerves safely. They're very smooth on the outside and they are sent out to be sharpened appropriately by the company that makes the scissors. Here's a little branch of the superficial perineal coming into view just proximal to that vein, which we're going to cauterize with microbipolar cautery. And when we're doing the cautery, you can see that we run that cautery longitudinally for across a long distance. So we're not just clipping it over a short distance, we're getting it buzzed proximally, distally along that vein so that we have good hemostasis. Because we have planned this incision longitudinally, we're really running the dissection parallel to the superficial perineal nerve branches. But you'll see typically when you do this procedure, it comes proximal as one branch and then it Ys out or Vs out into secondary branches. So the superficial perineal nerve, the first thing to do is to protect that nerve as you're going through. Otherwise, you'll find people that will have a recurrence from this surgery, and what it is is pain when the superficial perineal nerve has been injured. Patients that have nerve compression with neuropathic pain are set up to perceive just the tiniest little ding on one of these small nerves as potentially more painful than what you would expect. Their brain is sensitized to neuropathic pain. Now this light fascia is being released and here's one little branch here. You can see that tiny little branch there and you can take these tenotomy scissors and just spread in between the fascicles so that you're protecting and, and maintaining that small branch and yet allowing it to be moved out of the way given the nice elasticity of that uh, nerve so that you can reflect it so that you can carry on deep to release the ligament. And as I go distally, there's a few other branches that start branching off that main proximal branch of the superficial perineal nerve. So it's very important as a first step to identify these small cutaneous nerves. And then I go in the interfascicular plane between these two fascicles, again, just spreading with that tenotomy so that I am making an area to go deep and pulling those two aside, but keeping them in continuity. It's really important. Now Jeff's gonna take over here 
and show you the maneuver to go uh, distally and deep. Once the subcutaneous tissue dissection has been done and the dorsal cutaneous nerves protected, then access to the web space can be accomplished. There is a fascia dorsally overlying the web space that extends between the extensor tendons of the third and fourth toes. And you can see we're dividing that fascia right now. And this fascia is quite dorsal. This is, this is not the transverse intermetatarsal ligament that we will find later because that ligament attaches essentially the plantar aspects of the respective metatarsals. There are a few small veins uh, that can be encountered in this web space and a bipolar cautery is very handy to um, uh, cauterize these as we go through. The third and fourth metatarsal heads are relatively mobile. It's a little more difficult actually to get between the second and third because the metatarsals themselves are much more stable uh, approximately. But between the third and fourth metatarsal heads, a, a distractor type a retractor such as a lamina spreader that we're using here. And there are some specialty retractors that have been designed specifically for neuroma uh, uh, exposure that can be used to separate the third and fourth metatarsal heads to gain access to the web space. So we start the dissection essentially distal to the metatarsals and a blunt dissection with a curved hemostat is often one of the best ways. I'm basically hooking this up and under the soft tissues that, that represent the transverse intermetatarsal ligament uh, between the bottoms of the third and fourth metatarsal heads. Directly beneath this transverse intermetatars intermetatarsal ligament will be the neurovascular bundle. And it is often encased in a bursa type tissue. It, you don't often see the vessels until you've, you've done some dissection, but you can usually tell that there is a, a yellowish fatty type linear structure underneath there that we are dissecting through uh, right now. But the idea is, is to try to find the transverse intermetatarsal ligament, get an instrument underneath it, and then divide it so that the metatarsal heads can be separated more widely. And this is required if you're going to get access to the intermetatarsal nerve. So we've done some dissection and now that is sort of the leading edge, if you will, um, of the transverse in metatarsal ligament. And when pressure is applied, as I'm doing now, to the bottom of the foot, you can see the soft tissues in the web space being forced up and against the leading edge of the transverse intermetatarsal ligament. And this is actually the pathology. This is the problem when patients stand, especially in any type of a heeled shoe, the forefoot is directed to the ground and the weight-bearing pressure forces the nerve, which is often enlarged and thickened because of constant stress and strain, and there may be a bursa surrounding this area, and this area um, is then compressed against the leading edge of the transverse intermetatarsal ligament, which you can see nicely outlined here. Now, the scalpel blade is utilized to make just a linear incision when you put the transverse intermetatarsal ligament under some tension by opening up the blades of the uh, hemostat. This puts it on stretch and it's quite easy to almost just touch the ligament and it, it will separate uh, quite nicely. Eventually dissection is carried more proximally and the ligament just thins out and sort of just ends. However, there are other structures more proximal to the transverse intermetatarsal ligament that can be a constricting source uh, of compression for the, the nerve. And that typically is the leading edge of the transverse limb of the adductor muscle. So this muscle is, there's an oblique head and a transverse head. And these muscles are small intrinsic muscles. And we're cutting the, the uh, edge of the fascia that's on this muscle. These originate under the plantar aspects of the metatarsals under 5, 4, 3, and 2. And this muscle extends under the metatarsals and goes over until it, uh, its tendon essentially inserts into the fibular sesamoid. So now that the, the fascia of that muscle has been divided, the muscle can be retracted quite easily proximally. 
and then now you have a excellent exposure to the soft tissues in the web space. I'm going to now neuralize that nerve and make sure there's no small fascial bands that can constrict the nerve. It needs to be completely free along its course. Typically we'll use a small piece of seprafilm to stop scarring and that'll be just laid on top of the nerve at the conclusion of the procedure. I'd like you to just be aware of that laminar spreader that uh, Jeff was talking about and placed in. Non-tooth laminar spreader, absolutely critical for doing this procedure and I would not start the case if I did not have that laminar spreader on the uh, table and ready to go. In fact, there was one case when they didn't have it and I just rebooked it for another time. It's really critical. So just these extra little fascial bands, you want to release that all the way along. You don't want anything tight. There's another little tight bit right there. You want to release that. Typically you'll see a dilatation in the uh, nerve and I'll use these blunt smooth tenotomies to neuralize that nerve mostly just to make sure I don't have any superficial branches that are are um, compressing it. Jeff will go over again at the end of the procedure the anatomy so you have that uh, clear. There's a little swelling in the nerve right there underneath the scissors and still a few little fascial bands that are gritty and not the nerve. So you can see here they're on top of that nerve and I, I want them to go as well. No tension on the nerve and then a small piece of separate film and closure. I kind of look at the nerve. So here's what she just did. So. Um, and I don't know if we Let's hold this one. up here in your picture. There you go. We can put this here. So lights on this. Es essentially, what she did, what we first did was we made our skin incision. We released this tight band of the transverse metatarsal ligament, which actually attaches the bottoms of the metatarsal together. The nerve runs under it, and then this little edge right here was sort of this. It's, it's a kind of a fascia of the transverse head and then the oblique head of the adductor muscle that comes in and attaches to the sesamoid bone. That's great. So, so this is part of, so, so these Thank muscles you. are there and, and so the nerve, is, sometimes it's really, a really dense piece of fascia and you Around can see how it, it could be yeah. another constricting area for this nerve to get under. So so you do the transverse metatarsal and transverse, Jared, you take this corner. The, the TIML, you get the TIML first and then you and you kind of just make sure this muscle is just fleshy muscle and no, no uh, tension. Okay, so then let's look in here. Well, that's done. There's the nerve right there. Easy to see mm -hmm. and happy. Yeah, right. And this nerve, interestingly, in that thickness on it, um, and you can, I kind of just make sure I can go way back here and make sure that nothing is yeah, is okay. bugging that nerve all the way back. Okay. Uh, 